Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to use PubMed. You might be asking yourself, what's PubMed? PubMed is a totally free, 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 free database of um, something like 30 million scientific articles that you can explore. And so it is maintained by the United States National Institute of Health, uh, National Library for Medicine. And I'm going to show you how to use it today. And I love PubMed because it's the reason I don't, no longer have to use all of these old uh, textbooks that I have access to because now I can go straight to a very up-to-date research database. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Here we go. So this is PubMed. The um, actual URL is pubmed.ncbi, that's the National Center for Biotechnology Information, .nlm, that's that National Library of Medicine, and .nih, National Institutes of Health, .gov. Now, you can get to this really easily. Honestly, if you just do a search, like a Google search for PubMed, it is right there. So it's going to be that top hit. So here we are. Now, you can search PubMed this is going to be any kind of research that has a sort of a, a biological and most importantly, a medical focus. I'm actually going to search for some things related to chytridiomycosis, which is a disease in amphibians that I studied when I was in graduate school. Um, just to demonstrate that you can use like normal Boolean operators, I'm going to do a couple of fancy things. I'm going to add an asterisk. Adding an asterisk just means that it's going to return any searches that have something that starts with chytrid that includes chytridiomycosis, the disease, chytrid. Uh, which is kind of a name referring to the fungus that causes it, Chytridiomycota, which is the, the phylum the fungus is in. So I'm going to say I want, I'm interested in any of those things. I also want uh, papers that have the word itraconazole, which is an antifungal drug, but not uh, another antimicrobial compound, amphotericin. Uh, and so I'm going to hit search there. And look, I've got 28 results. Of course, if I had not been so specific, if I had just done that chytrid with the asterisk, then I've got 1,800 results. So let me go back to the original search terms here and the 28 results. And I'm just going to point out a few things. Uh, you can download this search. You can email this search. Um, you can send it to some of these uh, programs if you use them. And as we go down, if you look on the left-hand side, you'll see a few things. You'll see that you can see kind of when uh, papers that meet this search criteria have been published basically since about 2008, um, which is when itraconazole started to be used for this disease, um, going up to even 2020. If I wanted to search for only abstracts or, for example, if I wanted to search only things that have a free full text available, I could check that box right there. And you see we've gone from 28 to 14. And all of these are things that are free articles. So you see those words right there, free article, free article. This one's free PMC article. There are a few other things we can do as well. You know, you can... Um, try to limit your search based on like if it's a clinical trial or a meta-analysis or a randomized control trial or a review. Um, so for example, I can see that, you know, this up here is a review. This up here is a clinical trial. Let's say that I only want to read review articles, then I can click that there as well. In this case, there's only one. There's only one result. It's that review article. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what other things we can see here before we go back to the search page. So here I've got the article, there's the citation, there's the authors, there is something called a PMID that's a specific number that belongs just to this article in the PubMed database. So if somebody wants you to, if, if you want to share this article with somebody, you can say it's PMID and give them that number and they should be able to find it. Right here, we've got the abstract, which, of course, is just kind of a summary of the article. And if you keep scrolling down, PubMed will even suggest similar articles. So if this article is something that you're interested in, these other similar articles might also be worth your while. 
if you scroll even further down, you can see how many other articles have cited this review that we're looking at up here. So these would be citing articles. Uh, and then there's also some like some mesh terms if you're interested in that. Uh, and if we go back up, one of my favorite, favorite things um, about PubMed is that in addition to giving you a link to where you can go to get that free full text, it also allows you to favorite, uh, favorite articles you might want to return to in the future, and it helps make citing so easy. So what you can do is you can click that cite button right there. I can copy this. Uh, and then I can paste it into uh, you know, a Word document or a Google Doc where I might be keeping a bibliography. You can download it if you have like a citation manager that takes that kind of download. You can even change the format. So APA, MLA, NLM, AMA, these are all different formats that you can just easily copy and then paste wherever you're collecting them. Um, the link to the text is always kind of in this upper right-hand corner right over next to the title. So I'm going to click on it. This is going to open in a new tab for us. And this is just where we can get this review article direct from the publisher. And sometimes you'll have to kind of look around on this page because it'll look different for different articles that are through different publishers. But as long as you have limited the search to that free full text, that will only return articles that you have uh, available for free. So right here, I can see full text in the PDF format. And there we go. Now I have that full text, all of the, the whole paper, all 10 pages of it, complete with the tables um, and, and their references and everything that comes in this article. Now I'm going to return to our original search just to show you a few more features. I want to point out that you can also get that PM ID from the search page. You can also get the citation from the search page. So again, it's just a matter of making sure you have the format that you want and clicking copy and you've got the copied citation. Now I am going to simplify our search terms a little bit just to return some more results. And this way I can point out, I've still got free full text selected. And so all of these different ones are going to give you access to a free full text. So for example, I'm just choosing one at random. This one actually has um, two different ways that you can go to get that full text link. I'll just click on one of those two at random and point out that right over here, again, you can, in this case, see the entire article uh, all the way down. Um, or you can click and open the PDF like that. So this right here is how you use PubMed. I'm going to point out a couple more things. Over here, you can also, you know, where, where I had previously shown you how you could limit it to a review, you can also limit it to something published in the last year or the last five years or 10 years or choose a custom range. There are even additional filters. If you're looking for research specific to humans, you know, you can check this box. If you're looking for research specific to a certain age group, maybe you're interested in preschool children, you could check this box. So there are lots of different ways that you can filter these results. So let's say that I am interested in um, anything that mentions the chytrid, chytrid fungus, chytridiomycosis, and nicomycin, this being a, a different antifungal drug that perhaps I'm interested in. I can click Create Alert. And after I've made an account, and there are different ways that you can, you can make an account, you can even log in with like a Google account. Uh, and, and after you've made an account, once you click on that button, Create Alert, it will actually allow you to basically sign up for email alerts so that any time something that matches your search term becomes available, then you can create that alert. And now I will show just one more thing, and that is a free service called Pub Crawler. And that's this Pub Crawler web service right here. 
And it is also a separate free alerting service that scans daily updates to both the NCBI PubMed database and also the GenBank database. And this is where, you know, you do have to create an account. Um, it is free. So you just log in uh, and then you can set up alerts so that you can have PubCrawler do that searching for you, which I think is a great idea. When I was in graduate school, I had um, five or six different searches and pub crawler. The very first time you do it, it will return, you know, 600 hits, 800 hits, 1,000 hits. But after that, you'll get these emailed daily updates with any new articles that were coming out. So I was always knowing what was the, the latest thing coming out in my field. And it helped me really keep on top of things with my research. So that is it today with my tutorial of PubMed. Uh, thanks for watching Biology Professor. And let me know if this was helpful and if you have any other questions about how to use PubMed. And happy researching. Bye.